حبيب الله يا رسول الله يا حبيب الله. We find in the Hadith Sharif and in the writings of the ulama when they write about the birth of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم they write with love they write with muhabba for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and they mention the ahadith about the miracles that took place at the birth of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or right before the birth of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or right after the birth of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم for indeed there has been no match in creation there has been none born that can match the birth of the Prophet sallallahu he, he is the best of creation. So likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused many things to occur which broke the natural law at the time of the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For example, Imam al-Barzanji rahimahullah in his mawlid he mentions that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born that year which is known as Aam al-Fil, which is the year of the elephant, in which the Surah al-Fil outlines what happened in that year. Abraha tried to come and take over and tried to crush the Kaaba, and billah, billah. And he brought an army of elephants, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, caused the elephants to just become paralyzed. They couldn't move forward. And, and they couldn't go and, and complete Abraha's, Abraha's plan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Ababil, you know, to finish off Abraha and his army and the elephants. And they were just left like the, the dust and straw. They were, they were completely annihilated, the army. This was known as Aam al-Feel. The Prophet sallallahu was born in Aam al-Feel. On the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal of that year, Laylatul Ithnayn, it was the night of the Monday. So right, right before Fajr Salat, in the last part of the night on the Monday, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is said, by the Muhaddithin, like Imam Razali, he says that on the year the Prophet ﷺ was born, that whoever was pregnant in that year, whoever gave birth that year, they gave birth to a boy. <coughs> they gave birth to a boy. From the barakat of Sayyidina Rasulullah One of the miracles. Another miracle, when the Prophet ﷺ was born right exactly at that point, all the idols in the earth, they fell flat on their faces. The idols fell flat on their faces. Because who is being born? Sayyidul Muwahideen. The greatest monotheist. The, 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 the manifestation of Allah's Tawheed is being brought into existence. So all the idols fell flat on their, on their faces. Another miracle, there was a fire that the Persians used to worship. The Persians, the, the, the people of Faris, they, used, they were fire worshippers. And they had a fire that was blazing for a thousand or more than a thousand years. And they would keep it blazing. And it was blazing for more than a thousand years. When the Prophet ﷺ was born, this fire extinguished. This fire extinguished. Some of the palaces of the emperors and their, and their, and their big palaces and the pillars and the columns that they created, they collapsed at the time of the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. It is said that even the animals they were, they were speaking in Arabic. That even the animals began to speak in Arabic and they were happy and rejoicing that the Nabi Akhar al Zaman, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah was coming into this world. Why? Because even they're experiencing the Rahmah of the Prophet. Rahmatul lil Alameen. Not just Rahmatul lil Mu'mineen or Rahmatul lil Muslimin or Rahmatul lil Insan. Even the, the, uh, the angels are part of one alam. The, the, the animals are part of one world. The plants are part of one world. And the Prophet is being sent as a rahmah for all of them. And we know this from the seerah of the Prophet Sometimes the gazelle came to the Prophet Sometimes the, 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 uh, the camel came to the Prophet and and complained about his master that he's not treating me well, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet ﷺ, you know, he, he, mashallah, he solved the problem of not only the, the, the human beings, he solved the problem of even the animals, even the environment, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rahmatul lil alameen. These are the 
these are some of, at the time of the birth of the Prophet وسلم, in the blessed quarters of Sayyida Amina when she was just about to give birth, it is said that she never felt any labor pains at his salam. Sayyida Amina, she never felt any alam, any distress, any fiqal, any, you know, any complaint, any labor pain, which is a natural thing. You know, if we reflect upon this, subhanAllah, every, every woman when she gives birth, there is labor pain. It's a natural phenomenon. It is not that the, the child wants to give pain to the mother. The child doesn't know what's going on. The child is in the womb. It's not the child's intention to cause pain to the mother. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it that way as a test for the mother and to raise the darajah actually, to raise the darajah of the mother. That when, the, the, when a person understands that the pain that a mother has gone through, they respect the mother even more. This is one reason, one hikmah behind it. Hmm? But this is a natural phenomenon. The mother is going to have labor pain. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, it's His will, and He wishes that, of course, He can do anything. But when it comes to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He is such a mercy that even this natural pain is removed from His mother. Even in the womb of His mother, He is a mercy. Allahu Akbar. Let's just, let's just think about that. Even in the womb of his blessed mother, Sayyidina Amina, is, the mercy is still there. The mercy is in, in effect that even his mother is not receiving, she does not feel any labor pain, she does not feel any uh, alam, any distress that, that, that the most women feel when they're giving childbirth. Rather, she sees a light, a light that emanates from her, and it lights up the palaces of Busra until Sham, and she sees that light, and she sees the palaces. Right, of the kingdom, the, of, the, of, the, of the rule of the Prophet ﷺ, which will extend to those places. And she saw this physical light that appeared. And it is said that the malaika were present at the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, and they were making tasbih. They were saying, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu akbar. And because they were happy for the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. And it is said that even Sayyidah Maryam, and Sayyidah Asiya, the, the, their blessed souls, they came to the hujra of Sayyidah Amina to witness the birth of the Prophet Their blessed souls. Obviously they had passed a long time ago, they passed from the world, but spiritually they came and they attended the birth of the Prophet The meaning to say is that the heavens and the celestial beings are being happy and celebrating the moment of the Prophet Likewise, we should be happy, we should rejoice, and we should take this opportunity to show the non-Muslims who the Prophet is, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have a duty to present the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the non-believers. This is our duty, and we have to think as a community, as an ummah, throughout the world, how are we presenting our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? The greatest gift that we have that we can give to the people is the Prophet This is the game changer. This is the thing that will either attract them to Islam, right? Or if we do not present properly the Prophet it will repel them from Islam. We have a big, or we have a big responsibility on our shoulders. Why is it that we hear that people are leaving the deen? Why are people, why are youngsters leaving Islam? We find, we hear this, right? We hear this. Well, one person has left the deen, they don't want to become Muslim anymore. One person has left the deen, this guy, he, he become murtad, doesn't want to become Muslim. Why are people leaving the deen? My opinion and my research shows that they're not being, the people around those people who leave the deen, they did not get a proper glimpse, and they did not get a, get a proper knowledge of the Prophet They didn't know the Prophet Muhammad They were not presented or the people who knew them did not present the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam properly to them. They did not present his mercy. They did not present his shafa'ah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his intercession. Why are Muslims, young Muslims, leaving the deen and becoming Christian? Because the Christians go to them, they say, "You will find salvation in Jesus." Right? Why aren't the Muslims saying, "You will find salvation in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam"? What about the shafa'ah of Rasulullah? Yes, we have different beliefs than Christians, of course. We do not believe that any prophet is in the Ayyadu Billah, Salam, you don't want to say that. 
right? But we don't say that, right? We deny those beliefs. But at the same time, we do have mercy in our religion. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'ah. Inna Allah says, La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'ah. Inna hu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Then do not despair. Or do not despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Inna hu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Indeed, He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. Indeed, those people who despair in the mercy of Allah, only the kafirun, the people who disbelieve, despair in the mercy of Allah. This is the trait of the disbelievers. So we have to show, we have to present the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the greatest manifestation of this rahmah is rahmatul al-alameen, is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What happened on, uh, on fath Makkah? When the Prophet ﷺ came back to Mecca, conquered Mecca, the great conquest, did he start slaughtering people? Did he start killing people? No, this is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, form of mercy that any conqueror has shown in history. But hey Mecca, when the Prophet ﷺ came and he started to forgive. He said, if you go to the house of Abu Sufyan, you're safe. If you go here, you're safe. Some people came to his prayer, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we seek forgiveness for what we've done to you. Seek forgiveness from Allah for us. Prophet Sallallahu forgave them. Right? Some people were not so fortunate because they were true enemies of Islam. For example, there was one person who was Qatim al Wahi. He was a person who used to, but he was a Munafiq. He left the deen. He left the deen inside, he was not Muslim, but he used to write the Wahi. Now he, he went to the Kaaba. And he held on to the astar of the Kaaba, to the cloth of the Kaaba. Sahaba came to the Prophet ﷺ in time of Fatih Makkah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, this person, he's holding on to the, the cloth of the Kaaba. The Prophet ﷺ knew what kind of treacherous person that was. That even if he was to make tawbah, his tawbah would be inefficient. His tawbah would be just a, a, a false, a shirin. And the Prophet ﷺ said, no, that person you have to execute. Because he's a fitna. Fitna, or fitna to ashadu min al-qatl. Allah says, the people who create fitna in the ummah, it, it's worse than killing because the fitna, it removes people from the deen. And that's the worst thing because if you die and you're not on the faith, then that's it, you're finished. How can you say on the, on the day of judgment, what do you have? You don't have faith, you don't have anything. That's why fitna is the worst thing. So those people, there are also people spreading fitna. For example, those people who create cartoons and hatred about the Prophet ﷺ, they try to depict our beloved Prophet ﷺ as such and such, we know it is false. And many non-Muslims, they know this is false as well. And they try to hide behind freedom of religion, or freedom of expression. But, of course we know that freedom of expression does not equal hate crime. Hate crime is hate crime. And freedom of expression is freedom of expression. Freedom of expression has limits. Hate is hate. There are different things. Right? So those people are fitna. People who are mufsidin, they want to create fitna within the community that they live in. But my belief is that if we present and do our duty to present the beauty of the Prophet ﷺ, the rahmah of the Prophet ﷺ to our neighbors, our communities, then such things will decrease. Yes, there will always be people who like to stir up and create problems. But even when they create problems, right away they'll be suppressed. Right away, because even the non-Muslims who are sincere, who have some sincerity in their hearts, they will say, no, this is not Prophet Muhammad. This is not the Muhammad that we know. Like Michael Hart, he was not a Muslim. He wrote the book, The Hundred Most Influential People in History. He's not a Muslim, but who did he put first? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad He was sincere. He did his research. And he knew that this person ﷺ has to be the true one. That even 1400, more than 1400 years after his physical departure from the world, people are still increasing in following his religion. The highest, uh, the highest increasing religion in history is Islam. It has to be the truth. It cannot be a lie. The Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ, we know, he was known as, as Sadiq al Amin even before he declared his nubuwa. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How do we present the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the community? So that they can be attracted to the religion and they can follow Islam. Look at Abu Lahab. It is mentioned in Hadith al-Bukhari 
So he hadith that Abu Lahab, he had a slave girl. At that time, this was the norm. A servant girl, and her name was Thuwayba. When Because Abu Lahab was also, before he was an enemy, he was still the uncle of the Prophet Wasallam. And before the Prophet Wasallam declared his nubuwa and told the people when he was born, the Prophet Wasallam was just born, he was happy because he was the uncle. He was a, a nephew was being born in the family. So out of happiness, he, he told Thuwayba, he took his two fingers and he said, go like this. He gave Thuwayba an ishara, an indication, you're free to go. Out of happiness from my, the birth of my nephew, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I free you. <coughs> he showed happiness at the birth of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But at that time he did not know he was a Prophet because he was just born. He did not declare. As we know afterwards he was an enemy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is in the Quran. He was cursed, his him and his wife, they caused harm to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa enemies of the deen. And in the hadith of Bukhari, it mentions that Abu Lahab is in the worst punishments that someone can imagine in hellfire. But every Monday, that Monday which was the Monday that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was born, every Monday, he is given to drink cold water from those two fingers which, in which he showed happiness to release his slave of Thuwayba at the birth of the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him relief. He can drink cold water from those two fingers and he can sip on them so that he can get some sort of relief from his punishment. But then the punishment continues. But every Monday, because he showed happiness at the birth of Sayyidina Rasulullah he is given relief. And this is who? The one that Allah cursed in the Qur'an, in the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's cursed, him and his wife. I'm saying, he, he knew the Prophet sallallahu The Prophet sallallahu declared his nubuwa in front of him. He denied Rasulullah sallallahu But still, because of that one happiness that he showed, he's being given relief in hellfire. So, if we think about this, the non-Muslims here, did they see the Prophet sallallahu No. Did they deny the Prophet ﷺ after seeing him? No, because they never saw him. So my belief and my husnul dhan with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is if we show and if we give the proper knowledge of the Prophet ﷺ to the community, to the non-Muslim community, <coughs> if we show them who he is, we talk about his shamayl, his rahmah, his mercy, his compassion, his forgiveness wasallam, to the non-Muslims, and if in their heart they have some sort of belief, some sort of love for the Prophet, just even something comes in their heart, then my husband is inshallah, on the day of Allah is given Abu Lahab, who was the clear enemy, then why not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will maybe forgive these people, maybe grant them some iman, maybe this for them won't be their faith, because they love, they have some love for the Prophet. They will say Prophet Muhammad was a great person, he was a great man. Maybe because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the faith. Who knows? That when it comes to us, people of Iman, people of faith, when we rejoice the birth of the Prophet when we show happiness, when we recite Qur'an, when we do dhikr Allah, dhikr of the Prophet the rul sharif, salawat, salawat and salam, we feed the people, any amal salih, in happiness, we fast maybe, as the Sunnah of the Prophet said, the Sahaba asked, Why do you fast on Monday? I was born on the Monday, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the Quran on Monday. Any amal salih that we can do in the happiness of the Prophet, we will be rewarded immensely. Why? If Abu Lahab is being rewarded and he's a clear enemy, then what? Imagine if we're if out of Iman, out of love for the Prophet, we do any good action that pleases Allah, you will get a great reward for it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you. And this could be a means for us to gain the pleasure of Allah and the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when we meet at the Hawdi Kawthir insha'Allah insha'Allah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to meet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at Hawdi Kawthir the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is pleased with us and that we can drink from his blessed hands the water of Kawthir after which there is no thirst there is no desire for any more drink because we've drunk from the greatest hands that Allah has created how can there be any desire to drink something when you drink from the hands of the Prophet Right? Can you imagine any other cup 
or any other vessel greater than the hands of the Prophet Right? How can you imagine after drinking from his blessed hands وسلم, that nothing could be more pure than that. Nothing can be more happier. Nothing can bring you more happiness than that. Right? No other vessel can give you the fulfillment than the fulfillment that you receive from drinking from his blessed hands sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow me and all of us here to understand this responsibility that we present to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First and foremost to ourselves, our families, our close relatives in our circle in the best of ways. And then to present to the other community, to the non-Muslims, to the people who we work with, the people, our friends, people who we go to school with, the Quran, to present the beauty of Rasulullah in the best of ways. Sometimes you don't even have to say, you just act. Most actions are louder than words. This is true. This is a proverb, but it's true. It's reality. Right? If, we, if we try to follow the sunnah, of the process of Allah, there's nur. There's a light that emanates from him. And that light, if it enters the heart of a non-Muslim, inshallah, they will say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, inshallah. Right? So even just acting, following the footsteps of Rasulullah, this is going to be louder than words, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, Ya Rabbi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompass us in his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us his true love. Love of his Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rabbi al-Ameen. Love of the Ahlul Bayt, Ashab. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the awliya Allah and the salihin and love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the ummah from any suffering, any tribulation, any trial, ya Allah rahimin. Wherever there's any suffering, ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove that suffering from the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The barakah of the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant shifa and afiyah to all those who are sick and all those who are ill in any form or way. Allah give them a quick recovery, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. For those of us who have passed away from the Ummah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, raise their darajat. Ya Allah forgive them. Ya Allah turn their sayyat into hasanat, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Give them the company of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Jannah Tulfi Daus, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Bi rahmatika, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Wa Ya Akram Al Akramin. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 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 Wa Sallallahu